Hey everybody, Troy here. Welcome to PowerShell Fundamentals. This is the first video in the series, and in this video we're going to perform a basic introduction to PowerShell. What our basic goal is here is to first off compare and contrast the typical PowerShell installations that come with Windows 10 and Server 2016, etc. Most Windows operating systems will have PowerShell installed by default. We're going to take a look at exactly what you have to work with. We're going to locate, load, navigate the basic PowerShell installations, both the CLI, the command line interface, as well as the ISE, something we call the integrated scripting environment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to compare and contrast the key differences, the advantages, disadvantages between both of these environments and figure out exactly where you want to live as you go through your journey to learn this wonderful program. What we're going to do then is perform some basic customization in both the CLI and the ISE. You're going to see some of the, some of the ways you can make that shell a bit more tailored to what you want to see as you work with it. And then finally, we're going to look at this thing called elevated mode or administrator mode, which gives you a bit more power. That actually is not by default, and we're going to show you how to exactly run that. So basically, that's our goal. Let's start off by taking a quick look at my Windows 10 machine. So what you're seeing here is a basic standard Windows 10 installation. It's up to date, but every Windows machine since well, the last few versions have all come with PowerShell and there's different flavors of it. All I need to do is simply start with my start menu and you can see that as I start typing I have some PowerShell options. You see on mine I have two. I've got the PowerShell at the top, my PowerShell desktop application and on my PowerShell ISC. Now down here I also have two other ones. I've got my PowerShell x86 and my ISE x86. So first thing I want to do is just draw attention to these two bad boys right here. These are the 32-bit versions of PowerShell. Obviously now we're, we're, we're into the into the uh, we're into the age of 64-bit OS's and so these two right here are our 64-bit applications of PowerShell. That's why they came up by default. These two 32-bit options are there as a result of our need occasionally to go backwards in compatibility. So they're there for when we need to go back in time to talk to 32-bit applications. Um, virtually everything that we can think of is going to be handled quite well with the 64-bit application. So we typically going to avoid these two. We don't necessarily have to use them, but they are there for a reference. So that leaves us these two to work with, our PowerShell desktop app and our PowerShell ISE. Let's take a look at what those are. Basically what we're dealing with here is, let's bring that up again. We're dealing with, the first one is my command line interface. And my second one, the, oopsie, let's spell that right, PowerShell is the IC that stands for the integrated scripting environment. Let me just take a quick uh, turn on a couple things here to see what you probably see. Your scripting environment will look something like this and your command line will look something like this. So they're very similar in initial appearance, but you can see that the ISE has a series of different windows here. What we're dealing with here is a, a more robust, more functional environment. The uh, the, the, the CLI environment is very lightweight, it's low on resources, it's very quick and easy, and it's really there designed to help you execute very simple, straightforward commands. We can get in, turn, turn on the command we want, we can execute what we're after, and then we can close that shell and move on. The ISE is far more broad in its tools. You can see I've got this fairly big toolbar at the top. I have three different panes here. I have my first pane here is my scripting pane. That's where I actually type and write out all the commands I want that I want to turn it into scripts. I can edit as complicated a script as I can possibly come up with right there in that environment. Down here I have my command lane interface, my output pane. This is where the results of my PowerShell commands are going to show up on my screen. It looks very similar to my CLI. Now over here by default I have this thing called the commands add-on and it was available to me by this view window and you can see that I've got all sorts of different things here. This command add-on pane is what I was turning on and off as you saw when I opened up PowerShell. Now this environment here is a bit more heavy on resources. It takes more of your computer to run. It's slower a bit because of many, you'll, you'll notice a difference and sometimes when you're actually executing some of the commands it'll take a bit longer but it gives you all the tools associated with your scripting capabilities which you really want to be able to get familiar with. 
Now, basically, loading either one of these is pretty straightforward. You saw I loaded out of the gate using the start menu and simply typed in the word PowerShell and I was able to find it. With Windows 10, I can also right click on my start menu and you'll see I've got two quick shortcuts here to Windows PowerShell. Of course, there's my CLI and a right click again takes me to the same thing running in, in elevated privileges. Now I'm going to come back to that in a second. But basically, those are my CLI environment. That's not my ISE. I can get there really quickly with a right click there. Now, what I tend to do is, you can see across the bottom, I've got these pinned. Okay. Now, when I pin my command line, a right click on here gives me a few extra options here, including my running as administrator. But I actually have all my PowerShell options, my ISE and my command line, as well as both at running as administrator privileges. Um, when I execute these things from the from my, my, my taskbar, it's as if I was running it from the start menu. No problem, straightforward stuff. I also have a Windows quick key for it. Uh, many of you are familiar with the Windows R, the run command. You can see that I have the ability of simply typing in, you see that I was doing this before, I can type in the word PowerShell. Okay, and there's my CLI, or I can Windows key R and type in PowerShell, let's grab that one, PowerShell space ISE. Awesome, and you can see I can do both there. Now notice both of these are, are, are um, opening up in what we call standard mode. I'll show you exactly how we can tell the difference there as we, uh, as we go a little farther in the video. But for now, I just wanna sort of take a second and now that we know how to load and move through this, let's show you how to work this stuff. I wanna do some basic navigation here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna minimize my I'm going to minimize my ISE and I'm going to stick with my command line here. Now, the cool thing with PowerShell is that you probably already know how to use it. If you're familiar in any way with the command prompt, right, I think you're going to find that it looks very, very similar. It's very, very um, same in functionality. And if I wanted to run a command like ipconfig, hit enter, there we go. That's how I would do it in my command line. Well, guess what? PowerShell, exactly the same way. A very simple, basic command. Type it in, enter. I'm seeing, I'm seeing the the response of my command there. So it is a type and hit enter. Away I go. I get my results right there. So if I know any basic uh, command line commands, many of them work right in PowerShell, and so I already know how to use PowerShell by default. So if I can do a command line command, I can definitely do a PowerShell command. Okay. However, it's a little bit different in the in the PowerShell CLI. You see, I've got a different color here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to clear my screen and you see that my commands here are a little bit color coded. Now one of the cool things that I can do is I can actually use this function called tab complete. Okay. And what I'm doing here is as I'm typing, I started typing a command called get service. And if you could sort of guess what that does, that gets me a list of all the services running on my computer at this point in time. I hit enter. You can see I've got running and stopped a whole list of all the services that are going. Now it was color coded. It's a bit more vibrant. That color code is there to help me ensure that PowerShell is actually understanding what I'm trying to type. The color code gives me an indication that PowerShell is actually understanding the commandlet that I'm trying to use and eventually going to be able to execute that command. Um, it's just a functionality that's really handy. You can see that I have the same option inside the ISC. Now what I'm going to do here is just to make it a little easier for you to see is I'm going to minimize this scripting pane. I'm not going to use that in this session and I'm going to close this command line pane here and you see that now I'm just looking at the I'm looking at the command line as if I were in that CLI now again if I type that same command here get service I have that tab functionality I just hit the tab button it fills in the command for me but look at the difference in color you'll see that there's a difference there in terms of what the ISC is seeing and there's a reason for that which I'm going to show you in the next video when we start digging into running basic commands but for now it's just one of those fundamental differences what we're trying to do is just take a look at some of the differences here that you can see so now that we've loaded we've compared some of these things to what can we do to sort of make this a bit more customizable? Well, this option right here on, on the CLI, if I hover over here, this icon, this PowerShell icon, when I click on that, 
I can actually open up a series of options here. And one of those options is my properties. Now, maybe I don't like the background color of my particular screen. Maybe I want to change the color on my screen from blue to red, or maybe I want to change it to a lighter blue, or I want to change it to green or do something like that. That's totally fine with me. I can change the text on the screen as well, and I can change it to anything that my heart desires. I personally am going to just sort of leave this basically as it is because I think it's nice and easy to see for the video, but this properties gives you a lot of functionality to sort of change it. Um, one of the things I do like to change is I like to make my font a bit bigger. And so you see that I'm just running it at a bit larger size. One of the reasons that I would do that is that I want to be able to see the distinction between my characters. PowerShell takes a lot of special characters such as our semicolon, our colon, it needs braces, it needs brackets, it needs uh, apostrophes, you can see it there, it needs back ticks, it needs tildes, it needs all these types of commands that I'm going to use at various times. And I want to be able to pick a size and a font, if I so chose, that lets me differentiate the difference between those. And you can already see in the CLI it's a little bit tricky to see. Let's compare that again to the ISE environment. One of the things I can do is look at my all the options I have here under Edit, uh, View, Tools. I have a whole series of drop-downs here, and one of them is Options. And this is where I go actually go take a look at all the color scheme, the, the fonts, the sets. Now you can see here that there's already an entire color set associated with this that gives me an example of what PowerShell is going to do with respect to comments. They're going to be in green. Functions will be in purple. Parameters are light blue. All of those will become more relevant to you as we go through the course. But for now, you can see that PowerShell actually has an entire color palette that's designed to help you when you start scripting. I typically like to leave it as it is because I find it's very intuitive. But I can go through and change a whole series of elements here if I wanted to by just simply playing with these colors and fonts. I can't change the font. You notice that I don't actually have a font size here aside from this, but it's super easy because inside the ISE, I can use my control button and use my mouse to scroll and adjust the size. It's something I can't do in the CLI. So another difference between the two is that just the way I customize it and some of the integration with the mouse there. Now, once I've got this sort of set the way I want, really now it's just a matter of me executing some commands. Now you saw that I was typing in the command called get service and I hit the enter key and I was returned with, I, I, was, I was granted a list of all the services on my computer. I tried ipconfig and you see that I've got all my information here that came from my IP config. But running these commands is fairly straightforward. One of, the, one of the little pitfalls though, is that I'm running in what we call standard, in, in my, in my uh, standard mode. That means it's a restriction to it. It's like the, the typical Windows protection. By default, when I open up PowerShell, I'm restricted from running all the tools that I have because of the lack of administrative privileges. Typically when I want to be running PowerShell, I need to have the full power of that. And in order to do that, I need to be running as administrator. Now you already saw that earlier on in the video, how I do that. If I wanted to open the command line, I can type in PowerShell here and you'll see that I have PowerShell as an option. If I right click on that, I have an option to run it as administrator. And let's look at the difference. Okay. I'm going to open up the I'm going to run this as an administrator right here and I'm going to compare that. Let's go back to say my Windows R and I will open up PowerShell just on its own here. Okay, let's take, a, let's take a little bit of a look at the difference here. I'm going to move that over here. Carry on. Oh, get out of there. And let's see, there you go. Okay, let's just see. They're, they're identical in what they initially look at, but if you look carefully, there's a couple key differences. And the first difference you can see is that at the top of my Windows pane, 
for the PowerShell session, there is a difference. This one is actually telling me right here that I am now running this particular session in administrator mode. That's my elevated mode, which means I have full administrative rights to execute what I'm after. And this one over here, I am not, which means that many times I'm going to run into a commandlet that's going to get blocked or stopped or interrupted because I don't have the right permissions to run it. So basic security feature associated with Windows uh, PowerShell. And characteristically, I want to have the bravery to run in full administrator mode. Second thing that you'll notice too is that it takes me to a def different default location, right? On my computer, my user happens to be this number and my default location is actually my user, uh, my user directory. In administrator mode, I'm actually to take into the Windows System 32 folder, which is another indication that I'm running as administrator. This isn't always the way you can tell because you're going to see in, in a few videos to come, I can configure this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to change my home directory when PowerShell loads through the use of something called a profile script. So I want to customize my environment automatically by having PowerShell sort of preset a bunch of things for me. And so I won't always land in that Windows System 32 file. However, the way I can tell whether I'm in full administrator mode is always going to be right there. I always want to see that that administrator mode on my window. Now, a couple things I can do to make sure that I do that. Now, if I right click, if I'm right clicking here, I don't actually have an option for the ISE, but I do have an option for the admin. Okay, and there we go. Now I'm looking at as administrator. I can get in the habit of that. I can type it in the search, in the search, uh, in the search window. I can right click, run that as an administrator as well. And if I were to pin this, you can see that I have all my options right there. I tend to work almost exclusively in the ISE. And so you'll see that I've got that pinned. Now, if I right click on there, I can right click again on actual uh, Windows PowerShell ISE and I can run that as administrator. A couple extra steps. If you're familiar with Windows 10 and you're comfortable, what you can actually do is pop under the properties here and you can go under the shortcut properties. One of the things that one of your options under advanced is the way to actually say, I always want to run this shortcut as an administrator. And if I do that now, right from my toolbar with one click, you'll see that I'm running as an administrator in my system 32 folder. Okay, so basically that is going to give you the full power of PowerShell. And now you can now find it and we can actually get on with some fun stuff. Okay, so basically what we've done here is we now have found that there's more than one PowerShell installation. You've seen the 32-bit as well as the 64-bit. You've seen the difference between the CLI and the ISE. We've taken a look at how to load and do some very basic navigation, right? The CLI is simply a command line interface, just like the command prompt. The ISE, however, has multiple windows that we can turn on or off. It does have that similar command line interface so we can look and act and play just like the CLI, but we have those extra script environment there and all the extra tools that will help us accomplish far greater things with PowerShell. It also has several key differences, okay? Now, one of the things we saw was the customization, right? The color coding, um, some of the, uh, the the tab completion was there in both, but I could do little subtle things like I could scroll in and out with my customization with my ISC. And you'll find that in general, there's a lot more functionality associated with it. You also caught a glimpse of something we call IntelliSense, what I'm gonna cover in the next video, but the ISC does have much more robust um, element of features there. Um, we also looked at how to perform some basic customization. So I showed you how to change the background color, showed you how to change the font, the size of the font. Remember, really it's all about how easy it is for you to view it. How easy it is for you to discern the different characters because if you're trying to squint at this stuff or you're trying to pick a font that it's really hard to discern between some of these special characters, you're just making your life a little bit harder because that um, syntax is gonna be very important. And finally, we showed you the importance of something we call administrator mode. We typically wanna run PowerShell inside the elevated mode, which gives us the full privileges. There will be times where it's not sensible, but as we learn, we wanna make sure that we have the tools available to us, which come with the full administrator mode. So you wanna get in the habit of making sure you load PowerShell in that administrative with that elevated privileges, and you'll be able to use the full functionality there. So we're gonna move on to the next video and we'll show you how to do some basic commands here, and we'll get a bit more robust with PowerShell uh, from here. See you in the next video.